right? And don't put an and if it's not there. Let's read it. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from thy face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods and among you, and clean and change your garments, and let us arise and go up to Bethel. And I will make there an altar, and answer me in the days of my distress, and was with me the way we'll stop there for just a moment. Look to somebody sitting next to you and grab their hands and one hand and look in their face and tell them, get up and do something. And turn to somebody else this is beside you and tell them, get up and do something. Uh, therefore, You may have your seats. Father, we thank you for this moment, and we need you now more than ever. Speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirit. Let your anointing be upon us, me as the giver, your people as the receiver. We thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. Uh, Y'all looking that color. Y'all hear me? Y'all looking that color. Whatever that color is. I I think I think that God uh God loves unity so bad that uh, just the obedience of this t-shirt this morning that he may just do something crazy. Uh, are you are you with me? He may. Pastor Dawson, just throw something over that. I know you might be the minister of the, the house. But the, yeah, throw on a T-shirt. Amen. I just think that you might just... There's no little one for the little ones? No? What about when we used to throw them over them and tie the bottom and make it work? Yeah, do something like that. Amen. You never know. Unity, this, it was... It was what happened... Uh, when Jesus told the disciples to go in the upper room and uh, and tarry there and wait for the promise of God, and uh, Holy Spirit came and filled that room, and they all was baptized with the gift of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord give unto them. So we thank God for unity uh, this morning. Tell some them you look good in that collar. And I spend a second and look around and see somebody that the collar really don't fit and tell them you really don't look good in that collar. Uh, the word arise means to uh, begin, I know commonly within the uh, our imagination or our understanding of what the word means, commonly it means really to us to get up. But when you would have searched 
the real meaning of arise means to exist. Mm -hmm. To exist. To occur. Uh -huh. But when we look at uh, the reason for being in existence, we understand that we have to arise from something to exist. Uh, it, it, it also means to come into being. It's not about sitting on a chair I and mean, I'm, I'm going to uh, make myself contrary to what I'm telling you now later on, but I just wanted you to know that the common meaning is uh, somebody is laying down and you tell them to get up. That's how we see arise. But arise really mean to exist, to come forth. Are you with me? Uh, it's not about laying down and, and getting up. Or uh, somebody is sitting down and you say, please get up. But what it really means is about birth, existency, coming forth. And if I may run ahead of myself, uh, Adam, at his creation, if we should label him, he was an ariser. Amen. It's not about somebody uh, laying down or sleeping and you tell them, look, get up from the statue of uh, sitting or laying down is about coming forth and birthing a newness of a new thing. Somebody say amen. Uh, as, as we look there in Genesis chapter 2 and 7, we'll, we'll see when God uh, formed Adam. uh -huh. He was, and you know, some of you may not believe me, but uh, God really created a dead man. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm getting help now. I'm, I'm touching the theologians. Uh, uh, bless, bless, breastplate of righteousness. I'm getting help. Yeah, I love that. Uh, he was dead. Uh, just as. Uh, uh, Mary's brother and Martha's brother w was dead. Uh -huh. And when God got there, Bethany, he said, show me where you laid him. He was laying, y'all left me already, he was laying down in a tomb. And God says, roll away the stone. Uh, he was dead, laying down. And uh, Jesus called Lazarus by name. Uh, comfort also is a, uh, a comparative word with arise. You call somebody that was laying down or sitting down or whatever to come for it, meaning that you're going to get up. So, yea, though Lazarus was dead and was in a statue of laying down, a formation of laying down, he had to come, uh, he had to arise and come forth out of that formation to occur. Are you with me? Uh, I, I strongly believe that uh, uh, occur or to arise or get up really means uh, we're going to get from the position that we're in to another position. Mm -hmm. 
uh, when one has to get up, it means that they either were laying down, kneeling, or sitting. And I found out that one cannot be productive while they're laying down. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot produce. You are not in a position to do anything while you're laying down. As a matter of fact, I researched Mr. Google and I found out that uh, blood pressure measurements, including blood pressure differences, when laying down versus standing up, it's different. Mm -hmm. The reading is different. And there are three common positions uh, for taking blood pressure. I think I'm running over the place with you. There's one sitting down and uh, the other one lying down. And uh, some health providers rather doing it while one is standing. And the reason is I found out that uh, uh, the diastolic pressure is about 55 millimeter lower when one is laying down. So the best place to, uh, the best position to take your pressure is when you are standing. You get a real reading. I want you to know here this morning that one can, uh, uh, you can tell one to get up and they're still sitting in their mind. Uh, you can tell one to get up and they're still uh, getting up and sitting on the bed doesn't mean that you're up. Uh, you just arise from one position to another. Uh, but the real getting up when somebody tell you to arise or to get up is when you get up and stand up. There's nobody here with me this morning. And we found out that the church is in a place that we love to sit down. And uh, when you're sitting down, you really is unproductive. Uh, if you want to produce, you got to get up and do something. Uh, you can't just get up and uh, don't do nothing. You won't accomplish anything in life. Somebody say amen. And I, I, I heard when Jesus get to uh, Bethany, he said, well, where did you lay this guy that I want to arise? Uh -huh. And he said, well, look, you know, he's been laying here four days and the report was that he is now smelly and uh, uh, the sting is so great. I, I don't think you want to go by uh, Lazarus, uh, but because of who Jesus hears. Uh, he wasn't concerned about the, uh, the medical process of how he smelled because he was the one that created the smell or the flesh that caused the smell. So when Jesus delayed his process in somebody here this morning, your process may be in delayed and you might be smelling this morning in your situation. But I heard Jesus is on his way. It might be taking longer than you anticipate, but uh, rest assured that he is coming So. The Bible says in our text that God, I'm going to show you something. God said unto Jacob, arise. And I told you that arise really doesn't mean to change your physical position. Uh, but I believe Jacob has left his standing position and went to a laying down position. Mm -hmm. You with me? And the Bible says that God told Jacob, arise. Here we are. He could have said, well, arise. And don't do anything, but he was instructed further to arise and go up. Amen. Not to go down, but to 
Because every time that you arise, you can't arise to go down. Oh God, somebody help me here this morning. And he told him emphatically that I want you to arise and go up. Are you with me here? To Bethel and stay there. Mm, and, 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 and there make an altar unto God. I want to show you something. God instructed Jacob to go and make an altar unto God. Hallelujah. Don't just go and make an altar, but I want you to stay there. Uh, we have been relocated in our spirituality for so long, but God is saying this morning, get up and go find somewhere and dwell there. Hallelujah. Make an altar and stay there before God. An altar is a place of sacrifice. A place of repentance. A place of redemption and refreshing. A place where Sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. A place where blood is shed. A place of renewing of our spirit. And somebody need to understand that God is calling this morning for a new altar. Hallelujah. The one that you had before has been broken down. And God is saying, look, I need full gospel to make a new altar. A altar of refreshing. A place that you will be excited to go every morning. And when your heart is overwhelmed, you will go to the altar. When you want a deliverance in your spirit, you will go to the altar. Because it's a place of refreshing. It's a place of redemption. A place where we will go and come back refreshed. An altar. An altar. I believe mm. there's somebody here this morning that don't have no altar. You have no place of quietness. Uh, and if there's somebody here with an altar this morning, you know what I'm talking about. Now, when you go to that altar, uh, whatever time of the day that you go to your altar, you come back refreshed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because you really don't bring a uh, cell phone to your altars. Uh, and the iPad doesn't go to your altars. Uh, it's a place of respect and authority, knowing that you're going to meet God at your altars. Uh, and God is at some of our altars waiting uh, based on the promise we made to him years ago. Uh, every morning you told God that you're going to be there at 6 o'clock and uh, God got there at 5.30 waiting on you and uh, there was nobody showing up and God is at an altar, somebody altar this morning waiting for them to come and meet with him. God is saying reconstruct your altars. Oh God, somebody help me here this morning because it was the previous altars or the preceding altars that make you what you are today. Hadn't been for those time and uh, moments when you got up early in the morning and spent time with God, you would not be where you are today. 
Hallelujah. So God is saying that we must break down the groves and uh, the idolatry and the things that we are putting before him and get back and build a new altar and don't leave but stay there. I believe that after Jacob flew from Esau, he forgot who Yahweh was. Mm -hmm. He forgot who about Adonai. He forgot about Jehovah. Uh huh. The one that brought him up from where he was. He forget everything about him and it's the same thing with us today. Uh, when we get to be certain place in life, as we process through life's journey, uh, we forget what got us where we are. Uh, we forget about who brought us to where we are. And God has become secondary in our lives. But somebody need to know this morning that God is calling back to be number one. Uh, he want to be the head of your ship. He want to be the sink in your kitchen. He want to be the water that's running in your bathroom. He want to be a part of your life when you're making plans to put him first. Somebody need to go back to the altars. Ah, uh, you have broken down the altars you had once. And God is not seeing you as he used to. In verse 2, after he spoke to Jacob, the Bible says that Jacob went home. Please look in your Bible and underline it. The first place that he, he went after receiving the instruction, <laughs> he went to his wife and his children. And everybody that was living with him, uh, the Bible didn't say that emphatically, but I mean verbatim, but I'm just telling you what it might be representing. But Jacob went home. To his, are you seeing it? His household. And I put first there. That's where he went first. Uh -huh. He went to clean up home. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, they nobody can clean your house like you. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know where. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I can come to clean your house, but I won't find. You're not going to help me? I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about your, 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 your business, but uh, I can stop by and say, Bishop, could you help me clean? But you know where you push the last dirt when you were rushing. Mm. Uh, and it might be right under the bed. Uh, because nobody is going under, uh, under the mat, Pastor says. Uh, ain't nobody, because when I come to help you clean, I'm really not going to go under the bed. Uh, but when you get Back there, and God speaks to your heart. Mm -hmm. Last week, you shoved some stuff under the bed. When God speaks to you, you're going to go under the bed. Uh, you can clean better your house than I do yours. So Jacob went home and started cleaning his house. Yeah, He said, wife, come. Uh, uh, we, we, you need to change your garments. Uh, you need to change uh, your ways of thinking. You need to 
put away your idols and take out your nose ring and your hearing. You need to, uh, glory be to God, because we are getting ready to go up. Mm. Hallelujah. And they tell her, look, uh, uh, go find the kids and uh, uh, give them the same instruction. Make sure everybody change their clothes and uh, take a bath and, because we're getting ready. And he left and he went to his men. And he said, well, guys, uh, uh, put away your idols. What I'm trying to say here that Jacob knew the right thing to do. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Because Jacob once knew the God of Jacob, Isaac, and he once knew the God, Jehovah. He once knew Elohim. He once knew God for himself. Uh, so he knows what was right from what was wrong but the time and the season that we're living in we are compromising and we are shoving a little dirt under the bed here and uh, under the dresser here and under the mat here but God is calling this morning that we go back where we have shoved the dirt and uh, cleaned the dirt up and uh, amen wash the stuff up and because we're getting ready to go up to Bethel hallelujah glory be to God and I need to understand this here this morning that uh, uh, Jacob went to his household first and then he went to the men with him because everybody was going up to Bethel. I'm not going to leave nobody, amen, down here, but everybody's coming up to Bethel. But you can't come up to Bethel with dirty clothes and with the same mentality. You got to go take a shower and change your clothes. And the Bible says, as I run ahead of myself, that everybody brought their idols to Jacob. And Jacob had put the idols under the hook because because he was determined that everybody's going to Bethel with him and he was going to dwell in Bethel. I came by to tell somebody that you need to get up from where you are right now and clean up your filthy and mm, because getting to Bethel is going to take a new mindset. And we have been so accustomed Wearing hearing didn't matter to Jacob anymore. Filthy garments didn't matter to he knew that it was wrong. Are you with me, somebody? He knew, but he lived a life that way for a period of time, and we will call him in today's society a backslider. So Jacob knew the requirements of Jehovah God. But he entertained idolatry. Hearing in their nose. And hear, well, in those days, hearing really means uh, lucky charm. Hearing in your nose, or nose ring in your ear, in your nose, and it, it, it means good luck. And uh, 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 the, 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 these rings represent uh, just like some of you today with your harsh shoe. Mm. And your chicken blood. And your Bible over. Uh, <laughs> and the baby's head. And you're not going to walk under any ladder. Uh -huh. And there are some things that your ancestors had given to you. And uh, you're still holding on to them. And the reason why God came to Jacob, because there was a purpose in Jacob for the season to come. And then and, and, and there's somebody here that has purpose in you and uh, there's some things that God is asking you to get rid of because of the purpose that he has in you you're going somewhere tell yourself I'm going somewhere uh, I don't know where I'm going yet but um, there's a purpose in me uh, I don't know what the purpose is yet but uh, I, I need I need I hear the voice of God saying I, I, I need to clean up my stuff because uh, the time is winding up and uh, the sea 
season is at hand wherein I, I, I need to make a shifting, not, not to get up from where I am, but to come forth. Is anybody here with me? I, I need to come forth. I'm, uh, you got to know for yourself whether you're, anybody you're tired of where, where you are. Well, Jacob did not put up a fight with God. Jacob knew God and he was tired. And he just wanted somebody to speak to his spirit. Well, I'm talking to you this morning. So, Jacob heard the voice of God. And he told the men, put away your strange gods. Clean up yourself. Because he knew they were dirty and they were filthy. Change your garments and get dressed for the occasion. I believe he told them to put on the helmet of salvation. Mm, and the breastplate of righteousness. Uh, he said to them, well, we are going somewhere, but you cannot go up with strange gods. You cannot go up in your dirty clothes. Uh, Jacob said, let us come forth and go up to Bethel. And I, Jacob, will make an altar there to my God. Uh, you may have been living like this for a while, but there's somebody that was born within the period of time that Jacob didn't tell about his God. Uh, but Jacob said, well, I remember when I was in distress. Mm, and I heard, I heard, I heard I'm J Jacob saying, well, amen, I'm going back to the whole time religion. Ah, it was good for Paul and Silas. And I still believe that it's good enough for me. Mm, Jacob said, well, I'm going to, amen, uh, uh, mend back the breaches that was broken down. Mm, I know what God is looking for. Uh, I know the precepts of God. And, and, and I, I allow you to live this way for a while. But I heard Jacob saying, well, God spoke to me. And uh, when God speaks to me, I'm going to speak to you. And I heard Jacob saying, I'm going back to my God who was with me when I went through my situation. I heard Jacob saying, I hear God saying, you don't know. Jacob saying, you don't know like I know what my God has done for me. I'm going to Bethel to build an altar to God and I'm going to stay there because I've left God too long. I'm going to dwell there. I'm going to stay with him. And I heard David saying to Jacob, please stay Stay with me in this in Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. <clears throat> for he hath founded it upon a sea and established it upon the flood. I heard him saying, hey, touch your neighbor and tell them who shall ascend into the hills. Mm, glory be to God and who shall stand mm, in this holy place. Ah, the Bible said, Jacob respond by saying, mm, he that hath a clean hand and a pure heart, he had not lift up his soul unto vanity nor so deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the Lord hallelujah glory be to God you can't be blessed in your mess you can't be blessed going through the tradition of church theology there comes a day that you got to get back to what you know was right 
this work for me and uh, because it works for me I'm going back to what works uh, I know what works for me uh, getting up 6 o'clock in the morning and spend time uh, with Jehovah God uh, that what caused my anointing to stay with me uh, that's what works for me uh, I don't know what works for you uh, but that works for me and reading my Bible and praying and spending time with God uh, I don't know what works for you but I came by to tell somebody uh, get up and wash yourself and uh, change your garments and uh, change and put away the gods that come uh, that you have put before Jehovah God uh, he's getting ready to do something for you uh, but you got to clean yourself up uh, you don't you don't I don't know like you know uh, what is inside of your heart and uh, the things that you come pursue about and uh, the things that you need to change you know them. I don't know them. I only see you once, twice a week. But on the inside of your heart, there's some things that you need to get rid of. There's some idols in your home that you're putting before God. I need somebody to know that anything that you put before God is considered to be idols. Some of your workplaces are before God. Your children are before God. Your grandchildren, you put them before God. And God is saying this morning, you need to negotiate Negotiate uh, and do what's right and uh, amen come to a great conclusion that my grandchildren uh, my children I can't put them before God uh, amen hallelujah glory be to God uh, God is number one hell or numo uh, he is the first and the last uh, he is my savior and my deliverer we need uh, hallelujah to know what we're putting before God hallelujah It was the same Jacob that was a part of the NWA National Wrestling Alliance. In preceding text, the thing is 32. The same Jacob. Ain't nobody hearing me this morning. That joined up with the NWA. National Wrestling Alliance. Wrestled with God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and determined that I'm going to be the winner. Uh, because this wrestling match is fixed. Ain't nobody hearing me this morning. It was the same Jacob that made up in his mind that I'm going to spend all night prayer with Jehovah God. And I'm not going to. Until I get what I come for. What's your name? Jacob. Well, I'm going to change. It was the same Jacob that held on to the knees of Jehovah God. Oh, and God knew, somebody help me here please, that Jacob was a persistent guy. Mm -hmm. Because he held God so long until daybreak. When was the last time you spent time with God? Until the sun peeped through your windows. Jacob said, well, uh, I'm going to stay here. So God used the same scenario. Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel. I'm the same bulldog hold that you place on me 
in chapter 32, I want you to go and build an altar and hold on to the premise of the altars because you're living in idolatry. But I know you, Jacob. Glory be to God. I'm getting ready to tell somebody, you may have been messing up, but God is calling for a higher calling to get up out of your mess. So, a number of us knew or know what makes uh, the relationship with you and God pleasing. Every one of us knows. <laughs> you see, uh, a number of us are running on low octane. When I had the 1989 on the card, I could have put regular gas in it. And she would still run. Uh -huh. I've got the Volvo. I put regular. You could play with the octane. Put whatever you want, no problem. Uh, but these new cars, uh, you got to find 91 octane and over. Anything else you put in there, that baby going to tell you it doesn't belong in me. And she going to either not move or start capturing because the right component or the right type of gas is not in there. And you cannot put diesel in a gas running vehicle. She's not going to move. If you put diesel in a gas running vehicle, she's going to smoke and all the mosquitoes going to leave. If you put gas in a diesel, she's going to smoke and all the mosquitoes going to leave. Everybody, I'm done, that is here this morning, you know what keeps your anointing flowing. But because our altars have been broken down, we are allowing anything to come in. Every one of us knows that apart from the church consecration, a matter of fact, the church wins the consecration alone can't do me. The church consecration alone can't do me.
For me, the church consecration is 89 octane for my car. And for every car that is in here, whether you're a minister, priest, father, whatever you are, the Wednesday church consecration should only be a united front to unite us together as a body of Christ. It should not be the gas that we use to propel us or to move our vehicle forward. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to snitch on myself. Anytime you see me smoking, Anybody ever see, see me walking it like I'm f I just puffed through marijuana <laughs> and smoke coming out of my tail? Anytime you see me smoking, I left my altars. <laughs> you think I was going to snitch on me alone? Anytime I see you smoking, Anytime I see you believing <laughs> carnalitization, <laughs> I know because it happens is to me. So anytime that you and I behavior shift to carnality, and if the chairs say amen, that's what yeah, yeah. It's because we're not getting the right gas. Close. When my mother died, we just came off a great fast. And I went to Jamaica. Fasting buckets of cement, strong in the spirit. just came off a great fast. Uh, anybody with me? Uh, my father died. Uh, told my wife, um, uh, I'm going to preach up here now. She said, yes, dear not. I said, yes, I am. She said, yes, dear not. I went down strong. And uh, sharing with Ryan this week, he stopped, I was outside and everything was cool. Bury my father, strong, the preacher man, strong. And one, one day, a couple of weeks after that, Pastor and I were coming down to Brooklyn and I remembered my father. I start boo-booing like a baby. <laughs> well, sir, what you're saying, we can pass. Now let me back up. Jesus. We can pass a lot of tests. 
with the right octane. You, you with me? Pass another test. <laughs> my, my car, my car is, is built to use 91, and if I can find 92, anything over, anything less, she, she's not going to go. Performance, you, you're with me? The performance is logging. So, if pastor and I leave home, are you with me? I'm, 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 I'm done. And her little buggy can't run my car. Right? Uh -huh. And if we leave home and we stop at the gas station and I get 89. And she get what belongs to her car. And I leave before her. Is anybody here? You, you, you with me? Uh, you with me? So, so when you see folk, when you see folks coming out of church and <laughs> and 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 God is arising them, <laughs> check your octane. <laughs> and and I I I can leave home. Before and get on the belt, you know the route, and get on the belt park, we end up at Springfield, and I'm, uh, I'm going to be tottering. Smoke. And uh, com comical, right? Comical, right? It's comical. But here comes Pastor who got gas after me, but she put the right octane in the gas, and she's going to do this, and she said, Is that, is that, is that Bishop? But she couldn't see me, she couldn't see me because I was smoking. But when you get the right octane, there is no trembling in your engine. Your stuff start properly and you drive properly and you treat people properly because you have the right gas in your vehicle. Go back to what works for you. Go back to Bethel and stay there until you are able to consume the right gas. Do something about it. Don't you take this morning message lightly. Jacob heard, although his ways, his name is bad from beginning, and <laughs> although he was a bad dude, he has a spirit of persistency. And when God hooked up with him in chapter 32, God said, I won't leave you alone. <laughs> God is looking at some of us here this morning and said, look, get, get. I'm, I'm trying to come down. And he, he's saying that people look at you and think you are not going. <laughs> because they only can see what they can see. But God... Is it, God is seen next week, next year, 20 years down the road, and he knows where you are going. But me and you look at you, and even you look at you and say, you're not going nowhere. You, you, you can't go. But God has something in you. Why did God go back to Jacob and tell Jacob, is there anybody here with me? Because Jacob had a relationship, and Jacob was determined in chapter 32 that 
God, you are not going to leave me here until you... Is there anybody here want a blessing? Jacob said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. And God remembered Jacob and he went back and visited Jacob and said, Jacob, it's time for you to change your ways. You've been living this way too long now. I want you to get up and do something about it. So those of you who had fabulous relationship with God in the past, God is saying, I remembered when you used to get up early and pray. I remembered when you used to do your own 24-hour fast without nobody tell you. I remember then, and I'm coming is anybody here? I'm coming back, not with a message from the pulpit, but I'm coming back to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. God said to tell you, I remember when there is something in you that I want. And not because you strayed for five, ten years. I'm coming back to talk in your ears to tell you, get up, arise, go up and build an altar. Because I'm going to be there with you. Men look at your daily mess up. But God is looking at your getting up. Because he knows your beginning from the end. God works backwards. We are going to him and he's coming to us. I wish somebody. I wish I had some more time here to say. God is, please, son, let's give me two more minutes. Dawson, come to me. It's taking too long, God. Slow, 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 slow. Slow. Give me two more minutes, son, let's go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop. I didn't tell you. Don't go back. Go, go. We, all we can see heading. Is now. And the pain of now. And the struggles of now. That's all we can see. But God is seeing behind him and before him. Can I talk to somebody here this morning? And all we can see is now. Uh, we don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going to say next. I don't know where I'm going to go next. But God is seeing your next year, your, your 20 years down the road. And all you're seeing, I don't know what tomorrow brings. But God, just lead me as I go. And while you go, mm -hmm, while you're going, and you're making your daily mistakes. And people is criticizing you and talking about you. And you're saying, God, the struggle is tough, you know. And I know that pastor is not going to let me do anything because <laughs> I mess up. And she heard and she saw. And all these mess around me. And every day you step up. You come, come, D. Come, come. And then you're going to start church. So you have to understand this, you know. Then you're going to start church soon. So, yeah. So God taking this time and coming. And my clock is ticking. Today is Sunday. God not deal with no time. Mm -hmm. But he's coming. Today is Monday. And the days and the days are going. But God is coming. And God is coming to do what? To talk to me. To say, look, I see all of your daily struggles down there. So. But I come to tell you, there is greatness in you that I want. People put you down, but people only can see. But I can see, and I can see behind me. 
And what's behind me is where I'm going to bring you. <laughs> but I had to bring you through these moments of preparation to let you know when you get to me, I'm going to make a difference in So God just spoke. Arise. Arise. Remember I told you arise doesn't mean to get up from your statue, but to come forth. Lazarus, come forward. There was a dude that was waiting Paul and Silas, the hour of prayer, and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, take up your bed and walk. Help me. There was another dude that got delivered, and he said, he was the one that was sick for 18 years, 36, 38 years. No, another one there. Another one. May I come there? May I come? May I come. But he told him, it's in here. He told him, get up and he got up stand up and he was jumping up and he went into the synagogue and was praising God yeah, that's, I'm, I'm the same one yeah we went to school together y'all know that right He just didn't get up. But he, the Bible says he leaping up. And I guess he leaped himself into the synagogue. Into the synagogue. And started to give God glory. And the proselytes and the Jews and the guys of dignitary was saying, what's going on here? We have to shut down this dude because this dude comes to mess up the city with, with his healing and deliverance. So God spoke. Get rid of your idols. See this cell phone? It's a demon. <laughs> I don't know if it's a she one, you have a he one. <laughs> but he, she is a demon. Is, is there anybody here? If we should handle the cell phone the way, if we should handle the Bible the way we touch up, the, if we should handle the Bible we handle, the way we handle the cell phone, no devil could come near our dwelling. Let me close. How many times do you touch your cell phone? 